What's the worst wedding you've been to? Story one. Easily my cousins. It was held in their side yard. Styrofoam stuff for the aisle. She was about half an hour late coming out of the house because they had to deal with some critter and we had to bring our own lawn chairs to sit in. Ceremony lasted all of four minutes and we went home. Story two. Rich French people where we didn't know anyone and despite costing major coin, there were two tiers of invitees. Those that got orange juice peanuts for snack food and those that got the real cow, like champagne and finger sandwiches. The cocktail party was literally on two sides of a courtyard, and people who didn't get the champagne had to stay to one side. Story 3. My cousin who, let's say, isn't playing with a full deck, and thought that she had hired a caterer because she sat at a bar one night and said to this lady, You should do the food for my wedding. Waited until about an hour after the food should have logically arrived before starting to make some phone calls, only to find out that the caterer was on vacation in Costa Rica and had no idea that the bride thought she was doing food for the wedding. Dominoes to the rescue about two hours later. But the reception being at a bowling alley with a keg in the middle of the dance floor was completely planned. Story 4. A friend of mine hired me to play music with him at a ceremony. But as is customary in those situations, I didn't know who was getting married until they showed up. Here's the backstory. My wife was working for a corporation, and one of her team members was a guy who was happily married to his high school sweetheart and had two young daughters. Another of their co-workers was his best friend, who was single. Let's call the married guy Phil, his wife Kim, and his BFF Tim. Tim was a short, mousy kind of guy who had trouble getting dates. So Phil and Kim used to bring him along in situations where he'd normally be a third wheel. Going sailing, going out to eat at nice restaurants, and so on. Phil didn't mind because Tim was such a good friend, and he felt bad that he was lonely. So one time Phil is going out of town, and he suggests that Kim and Tim keep each other company while he's gone. Well, that's exactly what they did. And when Phil got back, his high school sweetheart announced that she and Tim were now an item, and he was no longer in the picture. So imagine my surprise when the wedding couple shows up and Tim comes up to say hello to me. The cringiest part of the whole thing was Tim bringing Phil's daughters up during the wedding vows and talking about how he loved them like his own, and how he was going to take care of them, etc. Those poor little girls looked like they wanted to crawl under a rock and pass away. Story 5. Some hippie friends of my parents got married when I was about 14, and it was a location wedding at some earthy little mountain getaway in Tennessee. Only it was outside and in mid-August, and in Tennessee that's like 0 .90 degree, full humidity weather. But that's okay. Since it was so hot, they decided to do it barefoot in a creek. Well, they had a cage of butterflies to release during the kiss. But as it turns out, they had all passed away because of the heat. When the big moment came, someone opened the cage dramatically to let them free. And like two half-dead butterflies stumbled out and the rest were shriveled and dead inside. The hippie bride screamed in horror. Story 6. My mom's fifth. It was a BBQ grill out. The preacher showed up, shared a beer with the groom. They sat in lawn chairs and insulted minorities for a bit. Groom asked if he could say his vows from said lawn chair. Mom said no. After the vows, we had to make our own food if we were hungry. Groom pulled out his phone and began looking up football scores. My mom sat at the table alone with the cake. I got the hell out of there. Story 7. Went to a wedding that my wife and I said will not last more than two years. The wedding was in the backyard of the bride's house. They had all the chairs and wedding arch set up outside. They set up a plastic tarp running down the aisle to walk on. Just before the wedding starts, there are darking clouds appearing. Should have been a sign to move the wedding inside, but they invited too many people to the oh no thing. Just as they start the wedding, it begins to rain lightly. The father of the bride is walking the bride down the lane and slips on the wet tarp and falls on his peach. Bride is now at the front, raining harder. People start to cover up with whatever they have. Some people start to get up too. Bride turns around and says to all, This is my wedding. No one is going to ruin it. You better all flipping sit your asses down. We all sit back down and the wedding resumes. It is now raining pretty good. The grass is now turning into mud. A few ladies in the crowd and the bridesmaid's makeup is now running down the faces. My wife has taken my jacket as a cover from the rain. They finish the vows and kiss, and then everyone runs to the house and garage to get out of the rain. Oh, remember how I said the grass was now mud? Yeah, lots of people slipped and fell in the mud on the way to the house. We got to the house. Many people look terrible from the running makeup, muddy clothing, and soaking wet. A few of the women had to cover their chests and waists due to wet clothing becoming see-through. Most of the men were loaning their coats to the ladies to cover up. Dirty looks all around. The wedding cake was outside and now brought in. The rain made the decorations on the cake turn all runny and it looks horrible. The bride and groom began to the cake and feed each other. The smashed the cake pieces into each other's faces, then began a food fight with each other. My friend's wife got hit in the face with purple icing cake on her face and dress. 
The priest got hit with and yellow icing on his white robe. There was nothing left of the cake to serve. Food being served was still frozen in the middle of the food, and the stuff that was not frozen was burned. The desert was supped to be the cake, but as said above, there was nothing left. There was a goodie bag that people got on the way out. Had a lollipop, a coupon for ice cream cone at McDonald's, a pencil with the bride and groom name on it, and Halloween size Mamp Mees. My wife, whose dress was filthy, her makeup was out of whack, and her hair was a mess, said to me that she does not want to see those people again for six months. She was so mad. The couple divorced 11 months later when the groom came home from work and found his wife getting double teamed by two guys. Story 8. I wasn't going to comment, but honestly, after reading these comments, I realize how truly special my uncle's redneck wedding was. Some notable things about the redneck wedding. To host the wedding in my uncle's backyard, they had to spend about an hour that morning, though the wedding was planned for months, moving rusted out car parts out of the way. And by out of the way, I mean from the backyard to the front yard and then covering them with a tarp. The entire backyard was dotted with massive patches of dead grass now, but nobody seemed to mind. A yard sale was happening next door simultaneously, which many of the guests made purchases at, including myself. $4 lava lamp couldn't resist. The inside of the house was so disastrous, none of the adult guests set foot in it. Myself and some of the other younger guests made a game of seeing who could tolerate the stench inside the house longest. Nobody lasted a full minute. There was literally garbage covering every surface with paths through the trash for movement. The garbage was so high it reached the bottom of the Christmas tree, which was still up in July. Predicting the state of the house, one of the guests' donation to the Candy Luck style wedding dinner was a porta potty. God is my witness. This man arranged to have a porta potty brought into the bride and groom's backyard so the other guests wouldn't have to deal with the filth of the house, and nobody objected to that or thought it out of place at all. The grooms all wore their nicest ball caps during the ceremony. The bride and groom didn't have a full set of teeth between them. At one point during the ceremony, the bride's brother gave us all a special surprise, which consisted of him using some sort of explosives to fire tiny plastic weights tied to Canada flag parachutes into the air. When I asked why he did this, I was told, they're Canada flags, at which point all confusion dissipated. The dinner and reception were held at the local legion, essentially a bar for old people, specifically veterans, not sure if other nations have something similar. There were six rascal scooters parked outside the legion when I got there. The bartender didn't pour drinks. He handed patrons a plastic cup with liquor in it and pointed them at the pop dispenser also putting any change from drink orders directly into his tip jar. Honestly, there was a bunch more weird cow from that wedding. This is just the stuff off the top of my head. I've been to some very nice redneck weddings, but this was not one of them. Story 9. Oh man, not me, but an old roommate. He ran a brewery tap room and was great at it. And he'd often get asked by regulars to bartend festivals, events, weddings, etc. One summer, he was asked relatively last minute to bartend a wedding the upcoming weekend for a pretty run-of-the-mill couple of regulars, which he naturally accepted. So, the day arrives. The ceremony and reception is at a little venue in Montana that's basically a banquet hall in the woods. So, Rumi sets up at the bar in the back, gets everything in order, and grabs a seat in the back, assuming that the bar would open up after the ceremony. Not so. As soon as the guests start arriving, the first stop is the bar, then the gift table, then back to the bar for another. This being out in the middle of nowhere, Rumi says what the hell and just keeps serving. Ceremony starts and people are still popping up out of their seats to refill. At this point, Rumi wants to slow things down. But his most frequent customers are the fathers of the bride and groom who are clearly drinking their disdain for each other and also happen to be paying for the booze, so his hands are tied. The ceremony is thankfully pretty short, as it's pretty clear that both the bride and groom have bought tickets for the struggle bus and the rest of the parties joining them. The photographer insists on doing photos right away since it's also obvious to him that the photos aren't going to be getting better the longer he waits. He lines them up, bride and groom in the middle, six groomsmen on the right, five bridesmaids on the left. Wait, where's the sixth? It's the bride's unmarried sister. As I said, it's a small venue. Nobody's left. The two bathrooms are open and empty. They find her. She's under the gift table crying. She's opened every gift and poorly rewrapped them. Cue sibling screaming match. Now the bride's crying. Okay, clean her up and take the oh no pictures. Now it's time for the first dance. I can't remember the song, but it wasn't something appropriate for the occasion, which should surprise nobody at this point. Doesn't matter though, everyone's more enthralled with the bride and groom who are playing tongue soccer and looking like they might start their wedding night early. Song ends, they're still making out. The next dance is father bride, mother groom. Thankfully, and maybe surprisingly, the same thing doesn't happen. While this dance is going on, the father of the groom does the oh-so-classy pass-the-hat thing where you throw in money for the couple. 
people are tossing dollar fifty s and dollar one hundred s and given the crowd probably some dollar one s and maybe some change. This dance ends. The hat makes it back to the groom's father. It's empty. Now all hell breaks loose. The groom's family is accusing the brides and vice versa. The groom's family is a bunch of no good cow apparently, and the bride's family is a bunch of out of state cow farmers. The groom's brother decides to be proactive and shove a broom through the door handles of the entrance, pulls out the handgun that he's somehow kept in his tux, and says nobody's leaving until the money's back in the hat. Bride's family is also apparently prepared and, most importantly, armed. The standoff continues until they find out that one of the drunkards dumped the hat by the dessert table and the cash got kicked underneath. People drink in celebration of finding the money, except for the bride, who's puking. At this point, the booze is basically gone. So Rumi says his time's up and he's got to run in order to open the tap room the next morning. They're closed the next day. Bride's father, who's about 6'5 inches by 6'5, puts his arm around Rumi and hands him a handful of bills. Not sure about the origin of the cash, Rumi politely declines and says that he was just tending bar out of the goodness of his heart. Father tightens his hug, looks him in the eye and says, Is there something wrong with my money? Nope. No, there isn't. Rumi takes the money and goes home, after stopping at the local watering hole for a much-needed whiskey. Story 10. I was invited to a wedding where the bride had met her fiancé online and never in real life. The first time that they would ever see each other was meant to be at the altar at their wedding. Not surprisingly, the dude never showed up. No one seemed that phased by it, though. They were pretty much like, oh yeah, bummer, his flight got canceled. We'll just proceed to the reception. Weirdest flipping thing ever. They're still dating, last I heard. Story 11. Hands down the worst wedding I've ever been to. My 20 years older step cousin married a girl from the grade above me in high school that I vaguely knew but wasn't friends with. The pastor went on a 10-minute sermon in the middle of the wedding ceremony about divorce. This was doubly awkward because there were nine parents present due to multiple parental divorces on both sides. The reception was in the basement of a bowling alley where the bride and groom liked to get drunk. They forewent a receiving line after the ceremony and promised to have one at the beginning of the reception. They were over a half hour late to their own reception. The receiving line never happened and they never visited with their guests. The entire bridal party showed up at the reception absolutely trashed and only proceeded to get more drunk. It was freezing cold in the reception hall. Most of the guests were over the age of 45. So, of course, they proceeded to play hardcore rock at painful volume that prevented all conversation. The wedding cake was cheesecake with frosting on it. It was in such a way that it looked like normal cake. Everyone was unpleasantly surprised when they took their first bite. It was not good cheesecake. The bride got so very drunk that someone tied a balloon to her bustle and she never noticed. She also had a sobbing fit all over my mother about how glad she was that my mom came. She had never met my mother before. Most people bailed about two and a half hours into the reception after the cake was served. Story 12. Wasn't trashy, but I'm Australian and I am married an Italian. Our venue offered open bar including spirits here in Italy. You can't really get that in AUS without paying an arm and a leg, and there is a reason why. They were not prepared for the Australians. My small army of 20 or so friends drunk the equivalent of plus 300 people. The venue ran out, and the guy who organized it reckons he made a loss. Until that day, all the Italians thought I was the loosest unpleasant they had seen. Then they learned I am the quiet one of the group. Story 13. The bride and groom weren't actually very interested in each other. He was very wealthy and she needed financial stability. It didn't matter from who. He needed emotional stability afforded by marriage. It didn't matter from who. She was, maybe still is, having an affair with someone else, who just so happens to be one of her teachers from high school. He knows and doesn't care. They got married anyway and it was awkward because only the friends of the couple knew what was actually going on. Here's the kicker. The bride specifically requested that the DJ play Panic at the discos, I write sins, not tragedies. Story 14, probably my own. We had planned a lovely wedding, but when it came time to actually put plans into motion, I realized there was no way in hell my family and his family needed to be within several miles of each other, much less the same venue. We decided we'd get married, just the two of us and the gentleman responsible for the paperwork. Planned a lovely little picnic type event. Our minister was a dear friend. We told him to bring his wife and we'd treat them to lunch afterwards at a local duck pond that has a pretty gazebo we could use. The morning of, and we apparently stepped into monsoon season. 20% chance of rain in the forecast had turned to 16 inches of rain overnight, with more on the way. We almost couldn't leave our house because the water was so high. I call friend and tell him to scratch the duck pond idea. Can he just meet us in town so nobody gets washed away? Well, we also run a farm, so the easiest common ground that we all knew how to get there was the local feed store. Hubby and I arrive early, go inside and buy the feed we needed. As we come out, 
Friend arrives and helps hubby load feed into the back of our truck. Still pouring rain. I hear something and see a four or five week old kitten about to get washed into a storm drain. So I grab it, wrap it in my jacket and place it in the passenger seat of our truck before climbing into friend's Honda element. We say our vows, sitting in the back seat, soaking wet and covered in hay and mud and go our separate ways afterwards. Hubby learns we have a new cat. It was a from beginning to end, but somehow it was perfect and we have a hell of a story to tell our son someday. Story 15. Can't really say I attended this wedding, but my buddies and I went to a small gentleman's club, the only one in town, somewhat early in the night. And with us being there earlier than when most PPL go out there, were only a couple other small groups besides us. Other than that, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. So we order our drinks, sit down at a table, and 15 or so minutes later in comes in an entire wedding party. Groomsmen fully dressed in suits, women in skimpy dresses and heels, claiming the row of booths along the back wall. They then proceeded to hold a quick reception. Few speeches here and there, a couple round of appetizers and drinks, etc. All this with strippers doing their thing in the background. Story 16. I officiated a wedding where the bride wore a too small white dress that she was spilling out of and did not cover her peach, as in, I could see her red thong and that she needed a trim. The groom wore a untucked t-shirt that still had the folded creases in it from when it was in the packaging and spent the whole ceremony staring at her cleavage. Both were drinking throughout the ceremony, but not yet seemed drunk, and she kept yelling at her kid to stop fidgeting, telling him that she's getting married so that he can have a daddy. When I ask the, do you take... Yada yada. He sniffs and nods, which does not satisfy the exchange of vows legal requirement in my state. I repeat the question and say, please say I do, to which he says, yeah, uh-huh, and continues to ogle his soon-to-be wife's cleavage. I swear he didn't look her in the eyes once during the short ceremony. She was smacking bubblegum throughout my speech on eternal love, and their lives were now bound together forever as one. That's my trashy wedding. Story 17. It wasn't trashy because of anything the couple did, but... My friend walks down the aisle and the pastor is drunk. So he starts off with, We are here to celebrate the love between Daniel and what's her face? And it just goes downhill from there. I have never laughed at so many weird references in a ceremony before or after. He talked about not letting her uncle interfere in their close relationship life and how it was a marriage bed, not a marriage couch or kitchen table. Story 18. I didn't go to this wedding. You'll see why in a minute. But one of my co-workers who I barely knew invited the whole department to her engagement party. On the invite, they mentioned that weddings are expensive, so they would like cash gifts. That should have been my first clue. But I stuffed $25 into a card and attended. The venue was packed to full capacity, and it was a cash bar. Next, all the women in the department are invited to her wedding shower. I have a conflict that weekend, so I pick a nice but economical towel set from the gift registry and give that to her at work. Her response? Oh, how nice! You know, you don't have to get just one thing from the registry. At that point, I'm flipping done. When the invitation to the actual wedding rolled around, I was probably more surprised than I should have been. At the bottom of the invite, there was a note that said there would be a $1.60 cover charge for each guest. I immediately RSVP'd no, and apparently so did a lot of the invited guests. According to one saintly co-worker who was actually friends with the bride, the happy couple dropped the cover charge idea after receiving very strong backlash from their families. Instead, they created another registry and picked really expensive items with the intention of returning them for cash later. Story 19. It was in a public park, which in itself is not an issue at all. The reception was in a small shelter house that was made of cinder brick and was basically a room attached to two bathrooms. Two public park bathrooms with all the atmosphere you'd expect in such a place. The wedding was right outside the tilde tilde latrine tilde tilde shelter house and consisted of the bride's mother ordering us all while waving her arms like a tilde tilde maniac tilde tilde conductor to hum, here comes the bride. The reception after was deli sandwiches, again, on its own, not an issue, with Boone's farm wine to make toasts, except if you wanted some, it was one dollar. Yeah, story 20. Mine, my husband and I started planning a wedding, second for both of us, and realized one. We didn't want our families anywhere near each other and two. We could either have a big wedding or a down payment on a house. We picked the house and decided to fly to Vegas for the wedding. My one condition I put on getting married in Vegas when he suggested it was that I got to make it look as much like a drunk mistake as possible. I wore a yellow backless dress with rhinestones, and he had a white suit with a Hawaiian shirt to match my dress. We were married at 11 p.m. on Friday the 13th by an Elvis, with a dog the bounty hunter impersonator and drag queen in attendance. She cried because we looked so happy. Also, there were eight or ten drunk Oklahomans, 
all in odd wedding veils, Groucho Marx glasses, or strange hats, who wanted to see a real Vegas wedding and just walked in and sat down. Elvis had to restart the band, his iPod, three times during my trip down the aisle because it kept cutting out. We wrote our own vows and referred to each other as during the ceremony. We had an amazing time. The photos are killer and we're still happily wed. Story 21. I was going to reply to a comment about a redneck wedding I officiated, but I realized that the amount of details I have might be better off as its own post. I marry people as a hobby. I don't charge, I just accept donations. Obviously, I've done a handful of weird or normal weddings for family, friends, and strangers that those people know. But this particular wedding, the bride and groom had a camo dress and camp tux, respectively, with trim. And the wedding party's outfits had the reverse scheme, all with camo trims. Well, they had asked me to dress in camo as well. I grew up in the suburbs of Portland, or I didn't see use for any purchase of camo attire. Well, I ended up wearing some blue jeans, a pair of hiking boots. They wanted the ceremony in the middle of a field near an abandoned farm, a hunter's green shirt, and a cowboy hat from my uncle. They were quite happy with the outfit. Meanwhile, I got there and found out that the bride-to-be had broke her leg riding a mechanical bull for her bachelorette party and would be on crutches for the whole ceremony. She had someone bring me over to her, pre-ceremony, and politely asked me to the ceremony in half while she was chain-smoking more than one cane at once. Unsure of what parts to, only my second wedding performance ever, I just started randomly cutting parts that seemed unimportant. Well, the big moment came and the ceremony begins. And here comes the bride, riding on the back portion of a John Deere Gator. Nice people though, kind of weird. Story 22. Mine. We had a baby on the way so changed our plans to save money. We had a registry due in the center of town. Our ceremony was delayed when there was a scare in the building with some dude from another party out on the window ledge. Afterwards, we literally walked 200M up the road to the pub, bought everyone a round of drinks. Then we walked across town to a nice restaurant we had booked. We didn't ask for gifts, only asked that people pay for their meal. We bought another round of drinks in the restaurant. The wedding cake was in the only corner of the restaurant where there was room. So I had to squeeze in behind her for the obligatory cake cutting pictures. All the pictures looked like I am bending her over the table and giving her a good seeing to. My parents were dismayed. I thought it was flipping hilarious. After the meal, we walked a little further to a church that had been converted into a nightclub. I had my first dance with my wife to some Britney Spears techno mashup. People kept buying me whiskey. I had to carry my exhausted wife, wedding dress and all, piggyback style to the nearest taxi rank to go home. Her shoes had mangled her feet. Do you know what? I'd do it the same way again. It was a flipping, fantastic day, and I was able to take the full two weeks off work when the baby arrived without worrying about money. Edit. Remember that I married her on her birthday, so that makes presents easier to do. I am flipping screwed if I ever forget, though. Story 23. My mum brought me as a plus one to a distant relative's wedding. We arrived ten minutes before the wedding, and somehow the venue was not ready yet. The bride and a few of the bridesmaids was at the front trying to oversee the wedding plans. She sees my mum and I enter the venue and look a little taken aback and starts yelling in our direction but to her friends. My mum decided to be the better person and console the bride by guiding her back to a private room and gave me looks that said, Help the people here. I didn't know what to do, so I went to a few guys who were setting up the chairs. Turns out the bride was some sort of control bad person and did not let the guys do their work. She approved their style of arrangement, etc., but didn't agree on the methods, whatever that meant. The bride's family had also spent a cow ton of money on the wedding, but it looked like they hadn't. It was somewhere in between gaudy and poorly executed. There were flowers being carted in randomly, flowers being packed away, loads of weird crystal bits just hanging around. The wedding starts two hours late and had a traditional side to it, a nod to the bride's culture and a more modern side, a nod to the bride's ego. There was no pauses because the entire thing was chaotic and everyone just kept looking at their watches. Suddenly, the bride leaves midway for an outfit change, which takes close to an hour. When she was about to show up, they dimmed the lights, but it was broad daylight in a place with large open windows. So she came through the door, took a look at the hall, and walked out. Her cronies and minions then scuttled around trying to pull in all the shades, walk her up to the place she got married and tried, as discreetly as they could manage, to let light in back into the hall. It was just pour out the water pour planning. So they then got married and started walking out into the restaurant. Turns out she hadn't booked enough tables or catering for all the guests and had just assumed that all the guests who ticked vegetarian wouldn't turn up. This includes my mom and I. The parents of the bridegroom, whom invited us, were so mortified because they had invited a lot of guests who were vegetarians. So a bunch of us, 20-ish out of 200 or so, 
ended up waiting in the lobby for a private lunch of salad, juice, and toast. We were then served a dessert of fruit. Apparently, the bride had only ordered enough cake for 10 people, just the top tier out of a nine-tier elaborate cake. I kept insisting that we leave, but my mom insisted that she stay until the end because she wanted to give her gift to the groom in private. He was her student, and she was very fond of his parents. We go in to find out that the bride had temporarily paused the wedding, and the whole bridal party was missing. We waited for 45 minutes, but it seemed like they weren't returning. My mom finally got tired of waiting and gave her gift to the bridegroom's parents instead of handing it to the gift people at the corner of the room. As we were leaving, we caught the bride and the bridegroom. Turns out, she had another outfit change and was insistent on taking some pictures before going back in for the rest of the festivities. My mom just congratulated them and told them that she had to leave. At this point, the wedding was falling back three-ish hours. The next day, my mom gets a text from an anonymous person who was asking in terms of the bride and bridegroom if she had attended. They then queried about why my mom hadn't left a gift. My mom told them that there must be a mistake and that she had left a gift. This turned out to be a text battle of sorts with my mom insisting that she had left a gift. Didn't need to go around asking her friends, the bridegroom's parents, if they had passed the gift to the bride's family and that she did not feel like it was polite to state the value of the gift. My mom had waived a loan she gave the bridegroom for tuition on top of giving them more cash. Later, I get a call from the bride. My phone number was used to verify the RSVP, asking if I had attended and given a gift. I said no. The bride then queried about my mom's gift, and I told her I had no idea. I passed the phone to my mom. Turns out, in that conversation, the bride told her the expected amount of monetary value she expected my mom to present to her, based on the amount of money the bride had spent on putting together a special experience for all the guests. I had only seen my mom explode several times, and I knew the signs. I just took the phone and ended the call. Sent the bridegroom a text explaining what had gone on and asked him to get the wedding gift from his parents. They divorced two weeks later. Story 24. This was a friend of my ex's, so I really don't know how they met. But he was a truck driver in his 50s, and she was a 30-something-year-old stripper. The flower girl was the bride's daughter from a previous relationship. They had a ceremony at a local church, which wasn't too bad. Actually, pretty nice church. But the reception was at an old country buffet. The trashy part was the families of the bride and groom. It was just a rowdy crowd. And some sort of altercation broke out towards the end that made me fear for my life. I was 18. They divorced a few months later. Story 25. My cousin had a hunting-themed wedding once. He wore a camo suit jacket and everything. Shortly after the reception started, his bride was hammered drunk. At one point, I walked into the restroom and the bride and her maids were in there. One of the bridesmaids asked if the barbecue beans were giving anyone gas, to which the bride responded, Hell yeah, I've got gas! So loud that the whole reception heard. Never been more entertained by a wedding, I don't think. Story 26. A woman friend needed a date for her sister's wedding. Chivalry and all, I go with her. I had met the sister and sorry, but she's as dumb as a mud puddle. And she is Einstein compared to the groom. They had written their own vows. Bride goes first. A bunch of spacey, love on a cosmic astral plane stuff that makes no sense at all. It really is a bad version of a 60s hippie acid trip. No continuity. Absolutely weird. Groom starts his vows. It was basically, I really love you stuff. Not too bad until the end. His big joke finish was, until fat do us part. It was supposed to be the big laugh. He stood there with a big grin, waiting for the laugh. Dead. Horrified. Silence. Bride and groom walk down the aisle. Bride's mascara streaming down her cheeks from crying. Bride's mother red-faced with fury. At the reception, the mother gets stupid drunk. Bride is going from one person to the next, apologizing for everything. Groom is whooping it up, having a good old time, oblivious to everything. Woman I'm with was deeply embarrassed, then finally had enough drinks in her to start chuckling a little bit. Story 27. I mean, this might count? My cousin had her wedding at a public park. The officiant was our other cousin, who had just turned 19 and got the one-time license to wed a week before. The wedding had a Star Wars theme, and they wanted the officiant to wear a Darth Vader getup, but she wouldn't. Then midway through, a bunch of people showed up to the reserved park and started LARPing and sword fighting. Not to mention the high school students running through the ceremony while they were training for track. Story 28. I got this. Our nanny's best friend was getting married, and my wife and I were invited because we had given that couple a bed and breakfast gift certificate we were not going to use, and they thought we should be at their wedding as a thank you. Okay. So the day come, and we are sitting in a field on a farm on the hottest day of the year. High 98. S. The bride is going to be transported from the house to the altar by horse-drawn carriage for about 2,000 aft away on a graded, slanted dirt road. The signal for the carriage to head over is someone unbeknownst to us standing behind the seated guests. 
and they proceed to blast a 12-gauge Stogan as they all go. Horse rears up and freaks out. Handler trying to regain control and horse collapses. Ten minutes of what's going on, we find out horse has heat stroke and cannot pull carriage. So, instead of forgoing the carriage, the bride's dad walks down to the wedding guest and asks for volunteers to help pull the carriage down to the altar. My wife nudges me and I say, there is no way I'm sticking my toe in that pool of dumb. About six people volunteer, including one midget. So they all get in place and start to pull the carriage. And as gravity and common sense come into play, the downgraded hill starts to make the carriage uncontrollable, and the people start trying to control the speed. And within 45 seconds, six guys are holding on for dear life, running a full sprint just not to get run over if they let go. As they are almost in a full sprint cartoon style, where their legs were going 100 mph, but the cart was going faster. The midget at this point is not even touching the ground, but his legs were still in running motion. I will never forget that vision. The carriage comes flying down the road and incredibly rolls by the grooves on the dirt road right into the hayfield and stops about 20 feet from the altar. It was quite literally the funniest thing I had ever seen. Then, to put the icing on the cake, the reception was a non-alcoholic event as Groom's family was super religious and it was a candy luck dinner. We paid for their cake as our contribution for the candy luck. My wife being the saint, she has spent $600 on that thing and the groom pushed the bride's face into it like an 8th grader, giving a 6th grader a swirly in a bathroom stall and destroyed the whole thing. Not one piece was served. Oh, but how a store brand cola can hit the spot on like a nice 7-7 seven and seven on a hot summer's day. Total cow show. Story 29. The time I went to a shotgun wedding. This is kind of long. Here's the backstory. I grew up in a small rural town, population 1,155 according to Google. Because the town was so small, people were familiar with just about everyone else. Sometimes you hate people, sometimes you become friends. This is how I became friends with the groom. We will call him Tony. Tony and I went to school together, but he was about three years older than me and thus three years ahead. Tony was a nice enough kid. He was a little slow at times, but he meant well. He was raised very Christian and was very devout, at least until he graduated and moved away. I didn't see him much after that until the summer of my senior year. He randomly showed up at my house and he told me he was getting married. So I told him congrats and asked when the wedding was. He told me it was in two days. This is when Cal got weird. He then proceeded to ask me to be a groomsman in his wedding. This set off some red flags. We were friends, but not that good of friends. In a normal situation, I would be surprised if I got invited to the wedding, but this is no normal situation. I was a little hesitant at first, but I figured that if he was asking me to be a groomsman, then he really needs some help. I wasn't doing anything, so I thought, fudge it. Why not? Fast forward about an hour, and I found myself in a rundown shack in the middle of nowhere. This is where I met the bride, Lizzie and her parents. Lizzie was a girl with a heart of gold and the face of a jackal. This is also when I learned that she was pregnant. But the lessons didn't stop there. I also learned that she was underage. She was either 15 or 16. Turns out that she got pregnant and her parents found out. So her father found Tony and told him that because Lizzie is pregnant, he either has to marry her or they will have the cops called. Because the thought of prison is a massive turnoff, he decided to marry her. This is the beginning of the most redneck wedding I've ever been to. The wedding party is a small one. There is one best man and one maid of honor, which is standard. Other than that, there are two groomsmen and two bridesmaids. Because the wedding is so last minute, there are about 10, 15 people in attendance. The ceremony goes about as smooth as it could go. They exchanged vows and were pronounced husband and wife. This is the part where if it was a romantic movie, the proud new couple runs out to the limo and laugh to each other as they drive away from the church, thinking about their future together. Unfortunately, this is not a movie. There is no laughing to each other and there is no limo. Instead, they have a 1984 Chevy S10. Because the custom is, somebody drives the new couple around, and because there isn't enough room in the truck, there are two bales of hay in the bed of the truck for them to sit on. The church is in the middle of nowhere, and the place they are having the reception is in the middle of town about 10 miles away. They are riding in the back of this truck through about 3 miles of country, 6 miles of highway, and 1 mile of town. By the time we get to the reception area, the bride's hair is all out of sorts from the wind, causing her to look like Animal from the Muppets. By this point, I'm furious. I had to drive the maid of honor and the two bridesmaids to the reception. It wouldn't have been too bad, except for the fact that they were all about 16, so they were laughing and screaming about petty nonsense that only 16-year-old girls care about. I decided to my losses and end this cow show. I dropped the girls off and gave an excuse on how I needed to go help someone. They understand and I wish them luck and leave. As far as I know, they are still married to this day and they have four kids and a fifth on the way. Story 30. My best friend got married to a very pushy bridezilla. I was the best man. At the rehearsal dinner, she tried to shave my head because it was distracting. I didn't have an overly odd hairstyle either. 
My hair was in a shoulder-length ponytail because my fiancé had requested I grow out my hair for our wedding, which was one of her lifelong dreams. Who dreams of marrying a man with a ponytail? Anyway, the wedding itself wasn't that bad, but the bride was intolerable. During the reception, the wedding party got to go get food first, and they had an excellent caterer who did amazing BBQ. The bride gets to the tri-tip first and grabs a bottle of ketchup and covers the whole tray with it because that's how she liked it. Then, during the speeches, she lets her maid of honor give her whole speech. But when it comes time for mine, she just yells out, This is boring. Let's dance over and over. I my speech short to keep my friend from getting chewed out later, and the dancing starts. Her best friend was having fun dancing and not really caring how she looked when Bridezilla comes over and starts screaming at her for ruining the dancing. She then went and locked herself in the bathroom and refused to come out for hours. I talked to my best friend, and he told me it might be best if I left. A couple weeks later, I'm helping my best friend with some work around his house, and Bridezilla comes out and says, Thanks for ruining my wedding. I should bill you for the therapy I'm going to now. Things only got worse for my best friend over the five years they were married. By the end, if he spoke to any of his friends, she would start a three-day argument about how he wasn't dedicated enough to her. The final straw was her taking him out on his birthday and then leaving him at the restaurant when he got a text from his dad saying happy birthday. He ended up waiting two hours until someone could give him a ride home. Never stick your banana in crazy. Story 31. I'm a wedding videographer and been to my fair share of weddings over the last few years. Haven't seen any insane cow shows, but one was cringy as cow. This couple was able to have their wedding in the backyard of a mansion. The groom was the top accountant for the owner. It was by far the most impressive looking wedding we ever done. The yard alone cost 50k in upkeep for it. Ceremony was fine and the reception was inside of this golf club resort. Inside the bar was in a separate room from where the reception was at. After speeches and dinner, the entire wedding party, including the bride and groom, went to the bar and never left. They never went around to talk to any of the guests, but just sat at the bar the rest of the evening. My partner and I had no idea what to film because everyone just looked bored and confused in the reception. It was a huge fudge you to all their guests. Story 32. I wouldn't call him a friend, but a guy I knew for a long time was always a shut-in and a pathological liar. He would lie about anything and everything from having his own apartment two cities over to his dad giving him a $100,000 on his 20th birthday. Everyone knew he was a liar, but we just sort of ignored it. He had his normal days where he was tolerable. Anyway, he came out to the bars with us, which was rare, one night, and ended up hooking up with this crazy girl who was sitting out on the bar's balcony by herself. She got hammered and came inside where we were playing pool and started barfing everywhere. Long story short, he got her pregnant and decided to marry her. His parents were wealthy and pretty upset with the ordeal, because this chick was completely off her rocker. They paid for the wedding anyway, and it went as follows. Front yard of a trailer with chain-linked fence is where the wedding was. They had a plastic altar. It had just rained, so the ground was like quicksand. They had cheap metal chairs, so fat people everywhere were sinking into the ground. They rented a Golden Corral chocolate wonderfall that people kept tripping over and turning it off, resulting in a big old doo-doo looking mountain. The only bridesmaid was also the DJ, with a fully equipped iPad, and some $10 computer speakers that were also sinking into the mud. As they walked down the makeshift aisle of Swamp Tears, they rick-rolled us. There was no alcohol, but his mother was loaded, crying and utterly defeated the entire day. I think that was about everything. Since then, they had another kid. We bumped into them randomly at a Ren festival, where he told me she had went to England for two months or so to bang a dude she met online. She told him she was leaving him and wanted nothing to do with the two kids, so this was her last time to see them. Since then, they are apparently back together. Her Facebook status is still showing as single, but they live together, so maybe it's working out. Story 33. This was recent. A friend got married to a Vietnamese woman. He mentioned offhand that he had to be careful with how much liquor he supplied to the wedding because apparently her side of the family has some issues with drinking. What I didn't realize this meant was that. 1. The father of the bride didn't show to the reception because of a personal emergency. Read drunk. 2. The brother of the bride showed up in a vinyl jacket and jeans proceeded to get fall-down drunk off maybe 14 a bottle of brandy, dude was maybe 120 LBs, and attempted to molest several of the groomsmen. It wasn't redneck trashy, but oh no, if he wasn't kidding about the drinking problem? Story 34. Not exactly trashy, but just odd. My cousin's wedding was held in Maryland. The bride was Catholic, and the wedding was held in her church. So it was longer than most weddings I've been to since I'm not Catholic. Additionally, the bride's uncle was the priest. That becomes relevant later. The wedding itself was fine. But during the service, there was a reception for another wedding going on at the same time, in the basement of the same church, 
complete with DJ Ed music. Literally, the exact moment that the priest said, you may kiss the bride, the DJ started playing Roll Out the Barrel. Bride's mother was pissed. She canceled her membership in the church that day. And to this day, about a quarter century later, the family is still not on speaking terms with Uncle Priest. Story 35. I wasn't born, but I was technically there. My parents had a shotgun wedding when they found out I was on my way. There was no proposal or engagement ring, and the big day was planned from start to finish in three weeks. The bride wore a bleached prom dress and arrived in her SIL's white Nissan Micra with ribbons cello taped on. They spent 400 pounds on everything, and you know what? It turned out just fine, and they're happily married after nearly two decades. Story 36? Let me try. Best man drives drunk approximately three hours home night before wedding. Bridesmaid secretly jealous of bride has hooked up with groom before. Same bridesmaid brought a guy she met on Tinder that day to the wedding met and drove approximately five hours together to attend. Same bridesmaid sent Snapchats of her vagina during, yes during, the dinner reception to Tinder date. Tinder guy then talks shows it to everyone at his table. Same bridesmaid Tinder guy curse out bride as they drive home after drinking all night.